On this season of Destination Earth, Akane and I head to the southern United States to get a jump on summer. On this adventure, we had the chance to visit Tennessee, Mississippi, Virginia, and North Carolina. Join us as we explore everything from the busy streets of Nashville, Tennessee, to the historic antebellum homes of Natchez, Mississippi, as we check off a few new states on this heat-soaked journey. Where are we off to today? Let's find out. After nine days of being on our road trip, we finally made it to Jackson, Mississippi. Up until this point, we had been to Nashville and explored this amazing city, and then hopped onto the Natchez Trace Parkway to slowly make our way south, stopping at a few attractions found along the way. About 15 minutes from downtown Jackson, in the north section of the city, is Lafleur's Bluff State Park. To our surprise, and pleasure, they offered great camping close to the city. If you've been around my channel for some time, you know that Akane and I love camping. You may not know, however, that I also run a camping brand, and I'm rewarded with living a life that I try and help others achieve. With a few days booked at this campground, Akane and I decided to set up our larger four-person tent so we could share a queen air mattress and get off the ground. We had a great site that was close to the water, had power and drinking water right here at the site, and was nice and level. After relaxing for the night, we headed into Jackson the next morning to explore a new city and see what this area had to offer. We ended up parking on South Water and East Pascagoula Street in front of the Mississippi Museum of Art to begin our tour. Well, I don't know about you, but I am looking forward to starting a brand new day here on our road trip adventure. So, over the course of the last couple days, we went from Tennessee through Alabama, and now we're in Mississippi, and we're here in Jackson, which is the biggest city. Now, not knowing anything about it, we have spent the last little bit looking into what there is to do here, where we should park, what we should do. We did find that Parking is probably going to be easier than when we were in Nashville. That's for sure. But I want you to come here. Now, and I, I read about this is that they were in the process of changing over their parking meters. And I didn't know how long ago this was, but thankfully they haven't done this section. And there's still nothing on here. And I know it's not working because lodged inside here are multiple coins of people trying to pay. So even if we wanted to, there's absolutely no possible. And I did go ahead and I went down the street and I wanted to check and see if other people were paying. The answer is no. So it looks like we're going to have some free parking while we explore the city. So we found their walking tour in Jackson on the website. So we're going to just follow their kind of route and then they're going to show like all the buildings. So let's find out. Here's a pro tip for you. Before you start actually doing anything, make sure your batteries are charged because, mm -hmm. well, the museum was found in 1911. Over the years, the museum expanded and relocated several times until it found its current home in a state-of-the-art facility in downtown Jackson in 1978. Continuing west, we came across the Russell C. Davis Planetarium. At the planetarium, you can enjoy immersive and educational shows that take you on a virtual journey through the solar system, galaxy, and beyond. The dome projection system creates a realistic night sky experience, allowing visitors to observe celestial phenomena, learn about different planets and stars, and then discover fascinating facts about space exploration. Behind this, and the large Jackson Convention Complex, is the Mississippi Museum of Art and the Art Garden. It covers approximately 1.2 acres of beautifully landscaped grounds and features a variety of artistic elements and installations. The design of the garden integrates both native and cultivated plants, providing a serene and inviting environment. The garden serves as an exhibition space for large-scale sculptures and outdoor art installations. No, I don't want to, uh, I know we've only been walking for like 10 minutes and I don't want to jump the gun, but 
I'm gonna call it that this place here by the Art Museum of Mississippi is probably going to be the most beautiful place in the city. The landscaping here is stunning and at least so far I haven't seen anything that quite compares. So this is a must, must see if you like plants, the different types of trees and just overall landscaping beauty. These guys got a damn pat. Turning north up South Roach Street, we could see the standard life building in the background. This was one of the most iconic and easily seen buildings in the downtown core. As we walked in this area, we noticed a handful of buildings really started to show their age, and the newness of the former section of the city was losing its grip. So one thing that we had done this morning was Akane was looking at how to get from our campsite to downtown. And originally we had started looking at some local options like taking the bus or, you know, driving in somewhere and then walking the rest of the way so that we wouldn't have to pay for parking. And then one of the things that she kept coming across was that the buses end their service at like six o'clock in the afternoon. And then she started looking at restaurants for us to go to while we're here in town, because usually we try and eat out at least once while we're in town. And all she was finding were things were closing at like one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, and we couldn't figure out why. Well, now that we're here, it's starting to make a little more sense. This place is dead. There's nothing, there's hardly any cars anywhere. We've seen maybe a few pedestrians, but hardly anything. I don't know if maybe we're just on the outskirts of downtown or if that it's just such a small city that there are no people. So we looked it up and you have to remember, this is Mississippi's largest city. There's only 153,000 people. That's not very much. Around the corner from the Standard Life Building, on the corner of West Pearl and South Mill, was a wonderful brick wall that boasted some flowers with the most amazing summertime smell. We took longer than most to hang out in this area, soak in that sweet smell before moving on. So what are you smelling here, love? Summer. Yeah. <laughs> really nice, really nice aromas coming off all these flowers, aren't there? Making a ride onto East Capitol, we headed down what I would assume to be one of the main streets in the city. It started off with a handful of cute small shops that gave a small town feel. On the opposite side, this beautiful Hilton Garden Inn classed up the street with its beautiful stone architecture. Some discreet government buildings shared the road with a bit of flair in the newer sections adding to the space. As we made our way further down the road, we could see the old Capitol Museum in the distance. We turned off at North Fire Street though before getting there to see the old Alamo Theater. This section of town looked much different. Run-down buildings, abandoned buildings, and unkept yards. You could tell this area didn't have the same love it once did. Situated on the corner of Hamilton and North Farish was the Alamo Theater. The Alamo Theater, also known as the New Alamo Theater, was a historic African-American theater. It played a significant role in the local community as it was an entertainment venue and a hub for African-American culture during the era of segregation. The Alamo Theater was built in 1942 and was built in a thriving commercial and entertainment district. During the era of racial segregation, the Alamo Theater was an important gathering place for African-Americans. It provided a space for entertainment, socializing, and community engagement at a time when public venues were segregated However, like many theaters of its kind, the Alamo faced challenges with a decline in the movie theater industry and changing demographics. It eventually closed its doors in 1970. Not far beyond, we headed back east down Dr. Jesse Mosley Drive, past the Smith Robertson Museum, which was dedicated to preserving and promoting the history, heritage, and contributions of African Americans in Mississippi and beyond. The museum is housed in the historic Smith Robertson School Building, which was constructed in 1894 as the first public school for African Americans in Jackson. Getting back into the thick of downtown, 
we passed the state supreme court before rounding around the side of the capitol building. Making our way to the front, we passed a host of other government buildings. It reminded me a bit of back home, as prior to working in the camping and outdoor industry, I actually spent eight years working in our provincial government system back home in Nova Scotia. One of our last stops before reaching the Capitol building was this stunning old school, now home to the Department of Education. Looping back around, we passed the old and beautiful Greyhound bus station. This bus station was a significant transportation hub for the city and the region. As we turned up North Congress Street, we could see the beautiful state capitol building dominating the views. If you recall, we also went to see the state capitol building when visiting Nashville as well, so we wanted to give the same respect and time to this one in Jackson. Well, there we go. So that is Jackson. Now it's a little bit different than what I was expecting after coming from Nashville. Definitely a little more low key, definitely a little more laid back, which is always a good thing when you come out of the hustle and the bustle. Now that said, you can tell that perhaps COVID has hit this area very hard. There's a lot of shops that are closed. We tried looking around for even a place to grab a drink, but even the fast food restaurants that we came across, there was nothing. So planning ahead a little bit, at least right now, is something that would be important. Make sure you bring lots of water, but you're gonna be enjoying it. There's lots to see. There's some interesting buildings, especially right in this downtown core. The Capitol building in particular is absolutely stunning. Reminds me of the US Capitol in Washington. If you've been down to Cuba and Havana, they have their Capitol building that looks a lot like this. And it's just one of those places that, you know, you can't deny it's just absolutely beautiful.